and uh, okay. Um, I'm very pleased today to welcome Kena Eliasson, writer, curator, researcher, professor of the free teaching program at the School of Visual Arts at Parque Lage, Rio de Janeiro, artistic director, Museum of Modern Art in Rio de Janeiro with Pablo La, La, La Fuente, a member of the African Heritage Commission for awarding the Longo Wharf region as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. She holds a master's in art history and a bachelor in philosophy. So thank you so much for being here today with us and being here with us this week. And again, all of us lament the sad state of the world in which you can't be here with us in person. Unfortunately, we had even purchased the tickets and all of us were hoping that the world would have repaired itself by now. But meanwhile, uh, we're very thankful that you could be with us here virtually. And so um, I'm thankful for that as are, are all of the students. Um, so welcome and thank you for being here. Well, I'm very, very happy to be here. And I really want to share more, um, more with you guys and uh, because I, when, when I am I am together, you know, when I'm person to person, I like to look in the eyes and first ask, how are you? And because this uh, question is sometimes we do every time like, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? But I really want to, uh, I really want to that you know that I really want to know how are you? Because now we, we are in this, this crazy time uh, that we can see each other, but we see each other so much that our eyes are completely exhausted. I am now I need to use these this glasses because I don't use sunglasses anymore because I don't leave my house so much to use sunglasses, but I need yeah, to sorry, use these uh, computer-like glasses uh, to protect my eyes because, and I think probably we all need to do this because we spend more than one or three hours uh, looking at this computer. So I, I now have this uh, computer-like glasses to protect me uh, because we have another a lot of images, information, and uh, connections in our days. But uh, Aaron, I just I just want to, to check. Now I I talk or I will listen more. Um, yeah, please uh, please talk. <laughs> you could you could start a conversation if if that, if you would like to. But um, but yeah, I think people are interested to see. Um, your practice and to see what you're curating and to see what you're interested in and to see um, what you're doing in the museum. Uh, so um, people want to know about you. So please, if, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, no, I don't mind. I really like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and who was with me this morning? Morning for you guys, because I'm here. It's almost 6 p.m. So it's, it's a little around night. That's why I need this this ring light that make this like crazy reflection with this. But well, I'm a art creator, and when I tell him when when what I tell when I talk that I'm an art creator. Uh, for me, be a creator was a very strong struggle to understand. Because I, I was already doing greater work, but I could not understand that this was something that was happening because I'm a black woman. And I'm a black woman born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So I, I'm very located here. I now am a, a artistic director with Pablo La Fuente in the one of the biggest museums in, in Brazil and Latin America, that the name is Museum of Modern Art of Rio de Janeiro. And this museum 
was built based uh, uh, looking at MoMA and the, the movementation of museums and institutions uh, uh, that worked in the kind of understanding solutions for, for the society through the art. So it's very, very Eurocentric institution. It's very, very uh, manly institution. It's a very, very racist institution. And of course, you can understand how tired I am, but I like to be tired. And that's why I like uh, to work and understand how to practice my work every day, not only here, but now here with you, uh, understanding this kind of knowledge around that, that uh, around, around that square, which is the greater uh, uh, work. When I start uh, uh, understanding that I was a creator, I, I could see that the structure could not make me see as a creator. And, and the structure, when I say structure, I say the city, understanding me, my family, my friends, people that I love, that love me, could not understood me as someone that could be this, this uh, particular uh, person that can choose and say what to, what to do and what to don't do in an art field. Um, I am a second generation of university uh, person in my family. What is very, very rare here. I have around 40, I have 42. I look like 20, but I, I am 42. <laughs> Uh, and people of my age are most of the first generation inside of, uh, yes, a first generation inside of uh, universities. So my family was a very strong family connected with uh, education as a struggle and as a way to understand how to be better in the world. And uh, as my self-defense, I have my very fighter uh, family that every day told me that I really needed to be the most intelligent person in the room. I need to be the most intelligent person in the world. What is that for one kid, for one child? The worst nightmare. Because the phrase, I don't know, I just learned to say, after 30. Before that, I, I started to cry. It was impossible to don't know. And it was a kind of freedom, say that word. After being a mother of two kids, I could say, I don't know, for my kids. And, uh, and this is something that is very important to say about what I am as a creator. And uh, as a black woman, all my work is feminized and racialized. And what that, that uh, means, I can tell you one very uh, funny um, moment that I had in my life. I was in MoMA in New York with some friends and with another person that wasn't my friend. And I was inside of a very wonderful exhibition of Brancusi, which is a very strong and wonderful sculpture that I really like. And uh, my master degree was about sculpture. So when I came inside of this, uh, this room, I just knew every single thing around every piece inside of that room. I knew everything. Why have, why have this kind of uh, a rock? What happened in, in, in the, uh, with the fish? What happened with everything? I knew everything. And I was just talking around that. And someone looked at me and said, wow, you know so much about Brancusi. And I just smiled and said, why? I didn't know anything around Brancusi. 
why it's so obvious that you are amazed with my intelligence. And uh, it's a very strong exercise that I can tell you that my family bring to me, uh, which is my smile. Every time that I listen to this or something around that, and I can tell you it's not a, a, a thing that happens once in a year, but more than once in a day, I smile. Which brings me one very wonderful poem uh, called The Mask by Maya Angelou. I don't know if you know this poem, which is a very, very strong poem that tells that, uh, uh, that Maya Angelou made for a woman that was inside of a bus. And every time that bus stop it and she moves front and back, she smiles. Every time that something happens that was that had some kind of violence or something happens in the city with black people, she smiles. And looking that, Maya Angelou could see that that wasn't only a smile. It was a particular movement of self-care to be alive. And let me try to find this. Let me see if I can find that. Yes. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It shades our cheeks and hides our eyes. This debt we pay to humankind with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mount the myriad subtitles. Why should the work think otherwise in counting all our tears and signs? May let they only see us while we wear the mask. We'll smile, but oh God, our tears to thee from tortured souls arise. And we sing, oh baby doll, now we sing. The clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile, but let the world think otherwise, we wear the mask. When I think about myself, I almost laugh myself to death. My life has been one great big joke a dance that walked a song that spoke. I laugh so hard, <laughs> I almost choke when I think about myself. 70 years in this folks' words, the child I works for calls me girl. I say, <laughs> yes, madam, for working's sake, I'm too proud to bend and too poor to break. So I laugh until my stomach ache when I think about myself. And so it goes this poem, probably you know more than me. And with this operator movement around this uh, smile, I could understand what I can do with my smile. That is something around more healthier that Maya can teach me, which is the a smile around the healthy, really. Because my smile is around a mirror who bring back the problem for the people who sent to me. That's why when someone asks me, or amaze or be amazed for something that I say that it's so intelligent, I smile and say, why you're so amazed? And wait. So this is a kind of intelligence that my family bring to me to understand how strong I need to be to smile and how strong I need to be to be connected 
with pleasure because I have this heritage, I have this um, blood line that are completely connected with pleasure. So without pleasure, it's impossible to work and impossible to live, impossible to eat, impossible to be. So I can say without fear to, to be uh, uh, right, that I'm very happy to be here. And I have, and I'm very, and I'm having a lot of pleasure to be here that I really want to share with you. And uh, working with a lot of humor, understanding this, this humor as a, uh, a, a plus point of intelligence in, 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 inside of the art world, I could understand how can I use this necessity to be the most intelligent, the most intelligent of the room, to be the most happier inside of the room. That sometimes is not so much difference. And being feminized and racialized, I could understand that I, I had a lot, a lot of doors closed, but I had a lot of doors open and I could not only use these doors that, that was open, but open that, that old closed doors to make the, uh, people understand that this is something important to do. So everything that I work, normally people think that it's around Africa, it's around uh, something uh, connected with body and something connected with sometimes native uh, uh, things or knowledge or something that is connected with some or with the uh, not non eurocentric ways of thinking and doing. And this made me uh, uh, understand easier that have traditional ways of doing and working that are not eurocentric ways of doing and works in the same line in art. I could realize that uh, the word quantum, it's a word that connects Eurocentric way of thinking in science way of thinking, Eurocentric science way of thinking to something that most of non Eurocentric tradition ways of thinking calls God, calls lucky, and sometimes calls art. And uh, as I said in our uh, first meeting about uh, economics and art, sometimes we need to understand what we call art. And I really like to doubt, have strong doubts about what we call, the, what we call art and what we can call art and what we want call art. What kind of operators that we have that made us see something. And most of the time is something that we see and watch that we can call art. But now in 2021st, we need to understand that art is not only something that we see. Probably that's why I am here where I am now in this time space. And understanding the importance of the things beyond from the something that we see that we call the right way to do the political right way to do the the uh, ecological way the uh, organic way this a lot of many traditionals did before. We have here in Brazil one uh, culture that people like to call religion, that it's Afro uh, kidnapped because I prefer than diasporic because I can understand diaspora as a movement that the uh, culture do 
for living, not for dying. I really like the word diaspora and I use a lot, but I prefer to use kidnapping because I am here because of kidnappings, a lot of violence and kidnappings. And uh, this uh, cultural structure that uh, here we can call candomblé that was mixed a lot with a lot of cultures and have done other names like Umbanda made us understand that we could feel and call many things as uh, something that is more, kidnapping is far more honest, yes. Uh, uh, and I, I like to talk around be honest, let's be honest. And um, in Candomblé, we have a lot of ways of thinking that we can call orishas. And the name orishas is very, a, a good name to, to talk around because the name Orishas came from the word Ori, which is head. But not only head, is the main head, is the top of the head that we have, that is very soft when we're born, full of influential things that can we can have, and our hair is something like um, a net that connects us for another world. So when you start live inside this culture in Candomblé, you need to take out to protect yourself. You need to take out the hair to protect yourself. You be stronger, you can be stronger without hair. And you are weaker with hair because of vanity, because of many things. And one of that, because hair brings energies that maybe you can close when you take out the hair. And talking around Orishas and Ori, I want to tell something around the Greek way of thinking and doing. I did uh, philosophy in my university and my master was in uh, history of art. I had this such a strong Eurocentric way of thinking and doing. That's why I call myself a creator. I completely understand how Eurocentric I am. And I will back with that. And in the Eurocentric way of doing, the humans beings, the humans are completely uh, separated from the nature. And the human body are completely separated too, because have a mind, you have a soul, you have uh, your feelings, you have your uh, emotions, and everything look like lives inside of boxes. And you need to take out and sometimes mix these boxes to understand. But we think very separated ways. Like, oh, like, oh, I, I, I don't know why I like this, but I like. This phrase don't make sense in so many, so in so many ways. And just makes sense for us. Makes sense in so many traditional ways of thinking. Make no sense in so many traditional ways of thinking, native ways of thinking, indigenous ways of thinking, Afro diasporic, Afro kidnapped ways of thinking. Because the body itself is something that already are connected with nature. Because the, the word connection don't need to exist for this kind of way of thinking. Because we, if you need, if we need the bridge, because we know that we are split, we are separated. We don't need the bridge, we don't need the connection if we are already one. But it's something that is very important to say: understanding that we are one. We need to understand. And sometimes it's harder. We need to understand each individuality 
each difference, each treatment that we need to have. So these ways of thinking are very connected with opacity. Because being transparent is something like being horizontal. I am not in the same place, people. This is impossible. We cannot think that it's possible to be in the same place for so many reasons that of course can be social, political, uh, cultural, of age. But understanding that idea of one don't change the idea of the collective or end the idea of the individualism. Because the romantic ways of thinking around the Afro uh, kidnapped or, or native ways of thinking that don't have a, a, a very strong uh, violent workings or violent uh, uh, dogmas that are that made they exist, of course, but are different ways of violence and. Sometimes we need to understand that violence itself is something that brings us a possibility to build uh, something. But what I, when I say violence is completely connected with rage itself, not with the violence with someone. And when I'm saying rage or anger, is completely connected with something that uh, made us do strongly with the, a lot of, uh, with something that have a lot of power. I don't know if uh, you work out, if you do gymnastics or, or, or like to do a, a very strong exercise. When, you are, when we are very exhausted doing an exercise, physical exercise. We need to be angry to finish that. You know, like we are just pushing like, I need to do this 20 times. In the third time I want to kill someone, but I will finish. It's this kind of anger. Another kind of anger that have itself is uh, when you see uh, a corn, a corn, simple corn. To, to be a popcorn, we need a lot of heat. We need a lot of anger. Just for doing a popcorn. So is this kind of uh, uh, idea that we have in our pleasure, this anger, and this not being this bipolar uh, ideas of the what is good, and what is wrong and understanding that we can be more intelligent with the limitations that we have in this bipolar way of thinking, being so Eurocentric because being Eurocentric is not, thing, is, is not something that I really want to, to vanish or I won't be a creator and I won't be inside of art world or I won't like money, which I like. Is, is something to understand how can we use this power that we have to do violence? How can we use this uh, connection uh, uh, if we know, because we know that we are split as man, woman, and why we need to struggle so much with the uh, law and rights for LGBTIA. I'm sorry if I miss, I'm sorry, because I have this kind of comorbidity. I'm hetero, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm, I'm this, this, I'm this one. 
But uh, why we need this kind of laws? Why you need to fight for, why you need to scream Black Lives Matter? Because we need to understand as a society that we are not the same, but we really deserve the same ways of being, doing, wanting. And this is just, it, it, we just can do that if we could understand how different we are not as one, because we are Eurocentric, but as one, if we can talk and think around another ways of doing and thinking. Why I'm telling that being a creator? Because I like to research and I do research a lot beyond my eye. Just before this be fashion, because now it's fashion, just black people doing black work just women do women work, just na 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 doing na na na. Like you need to be in, uh, again inside of the boxes to, to understanding the ways of doing and thinking. But why we, we need to say just women can talk around women rights? Why? Why we say just black people need to talk around black? rights or because we have this um, kind of open limits around what is be Eurocentric. Because being Eurocentric, we can understand what is racism, what is uh, machism, what is, what is uh, violence for this kind of body. And we develop this intelligence around that. And we develop this uh, self, uh, not, not self, this, this, this kind of movement that made us live and bring better things for life. Because if you read in the books, just the suffering of the heroes and the heroines and how they get the better a, a, a better word being alive and when the book say the end if we do this in a real life almost uh, the people who suffer will kill another people that don't but we make this kind of operators like said Maya Angelou with smiles that made us understand that we need to be connected we need to understand and we need to have solutions. This is the word. We need to, to have solutions, not answers, but solutions for some questions that came because the question is still and the will is still changing every time. So I'm the, this kind of uh, uh, creator that likes to bring the whole body of work and when I say whole body of work, it's not only watching because, and now it's really watching the work. That's why I love studio visits because I can see the work. I can talk with artists. I can take some doubts, take out, take in and see inside and, and let me fall in love. And this is very important. We need to let ourselves fall in love. And when I say fall, it's really fall back. Because when something get us, made us fall. And when I say love, and I am a love researcher, I have this in my, my uh, personal email, I'm a love researcher. I start to research a love as a word first, because love is a very new word. Love have this, this very, uh, um, I think, I think I have, I think we have just love have the age of this century, probably love have uh, 20, 21 years. But before this word, we had another word to tell about this feeling and this connection. 
And so I started to research older languages than English and Portuguese, of course, because I, I am Brazilian and the language that I learned for my, my land is Portuguese. So I started to research older than Portuguese, English and French uh, words to communicate what is love. And being racialized and feminized, I came with Queen of Saba. Because when I was a kid, I really want to be a nun. I prayed a lot for you guys. A lot. You don't know how much I prayed. Because I really want to work for something that is bigger than me. And I believed that that could be something connected with love. And I just could understand that I really love love, but I don't love institutions. And I can be inside of one institution that I cannot be the boss. So I cannot be a them, but I can be a creator and now I'm a director. So let's come back to love. The Queen of Saba that lives in, in Ethiopia, that lived in Ethiopia, had this Amharic language, which is one of the older language that still lives, that the people still use. And I came with this word, fikirir. Fikirir, we can translate to love. But I'm a fikirir researcher because love is very young. Love is very connected with the romance and I'm not a romantic person. I, and I will tell you why I'm not a romantic. And why, what I say that when I, when I say that I'm not a romantic. This love is connected because it's the older love. It's not this young love that only young people feel. There's not this younger love, and I can say around this is connected to with the power of working and doing that only younger people want and can do. The uh, how sensual one love can be when the love is old, when it's completely connected with someone and we can understand how invasive another one can be with you and you still are connected with that. Is this kind of love that I really like to research and understand, which is fikiri because it's older, it's more clever, it's more tasty smell better than this love that we, uh, we, when the structure gave to us, when we born, this love already exists. So I can present to you Fikirir, which is older, but was forced to be forgotten. Forgotten and forgiven. No, forgotten. Yes, forgotten, sorry. We need to forget this kind of love to make sure that the love that we know that exists, that this love, that the first love that we are connected exists. Because this love is connected with the goddess, connected with the ego, connect, is connected with this ideal that we never will reach. It's connected with something that we'll never get. So is connected itself for a self-violence that I refuse to be. It's this kind of romantic that I am, not romantic. In this way, this fikiri is more practice, is more sexy because we can taste it. 
and we can throw it out. We can don't like anymore. We can forget. This kind of love, of love I prefer. Because sometimes we always like to say how good is to be connected. But sometimes we need to understand that we need to disconnect to be alive and have pleasure. Because when I say to be alive, it's not around surviving. It's around living good, healthy, happy, and coming. Because this is very important. We need to come. And we need to understand how to do this working with our eyes, with our creating process, artistic process, smiling, laughing a lot, and crying a lot too, of course, because we're connected with suffering too, because it's not only this uh, fairy tale uh, uh, ideal that is very romantic. And uh, this, this kind of intelligence made me uh, be very curious around what art can do, what an artist and a piece of art can do. Not only uh, uh, the connections that we can right away bring, what you can understand and feel about that. Because we have a lot of artists that uh, uh, answer me one one question that I really like to do. When you know that your right that your work is ready, and most of them say, "I just know." Why? Of course, this is completely connected with intellectuality, but this is but this is completely connected with this intellectuality that we have in the, our whole body. Because if you if we eat or drink, if we drink too much, if I drink it too much yesterday, today is gonna be like the worst day of my life. Because I'm I'll be just like almost dead. We need to be prepared to do some things. We need to understand how to use our body to do some things. And uh, because people just said to me so many times that I need to understand the body, the body, the body, I start to understand the body as something that we can think through the whole body, how I put my feet in the floor, I, I think better or worse. My English is better if I drink more water. That's why I'm here with my water. And I just could understood that because I like to look at myself. And this is an intellectual movement. We have people of many cultures that need to twerk before write. You know, like uh, now twerking is fashion, but, but this is a traditional movement of many cultures. Hula in Hawaii is a kind of twerking. That is a kind of communication that only some kind of people that can do. It's a, it's a very strong intellectuality. If we can do some kind of mudras, like this position of hands, we can start a develop some, so many words, works and languages. Just doing mudra, we can, start to learn another language or playing piano. And disconnect this made this kind of way of thinking and doing, split it everything in art, religion, and politics. That sometimes is the same.
Let's talk about Michelangelo. What is the difference in Michelangelo around the art, religion, and politics? What is the difference? Why only guerrilla girls are politic art? Picasso. I don't like to say a lot about him. So let's change the subject. Mm, another one. Oh, Pollock. Well, let's go to US. Pollock. How Pollock could born in another society? Could Pollock be Brazilian? And why Pollock don't do regional art? Thank you, imperialism. Why as a creator, my work is racialized and feminized? So I am this kind of creator that's like to talk a lot, like to think a lot. Poetry, music, movement, singing is something that is particular essential to start a exhibition, to start a research, to start a talk, a class. So for me, it's very important to uh, talk to you around. I am not a creator so different that so many creators that are very traditional creators. But my traditional way of doing is larger. It, when I say larger, I don't say better. Because it's not about that. I don't want to be better. I don't want to be the most intelligent person in the room. Some, someday I really want to stop to give that smile. It's not today, but maybe someday. And I know that I only can do that if I keep doing curatorial ways of working. If I keep knowing artists, if I keep doing classes, if I keep going and doing exhibitions, if I start again to travel, <laughs> I miss this a lot because when, uh, when a, a body who clicks, I like this word, this, this phrase, because it uh, was very strong for me. A body who clicks thinks different. And I say that because I started to study uh, Nosa, which is a, a language from South Africa. And to learn Nosa, I start to sing because I needed to understand how to click. And uh, when I click it, I could understand that I needed to be very concentrated because we have three times of clicking in Moza. And I just knew uh, Miriam Makeba, which is a very strong, uh, important uh, singer and uh, have this click song. I don't know if you know, I don't know if some of you know the song. 
that uh, call it, it's a song for a very special song, traditional song that people sing in the weddings and talks around a beetle. And because of the music, I started to research Beatles. And I could, uh, and I could uh, say very uh, easy that have this regular word that say the Beatles flies even being impossible. But we have Beatles are one of the most um, various institutions that we have in nature. We have more Beatles than everything. And so this particular impossible thing happens so many times, so many times in this world that we don't see. That for me is completely connected with God, religion, politics, and art. Because it is kind of impossible that happens every day that we are. And I put myself in that place. That's why I call myself a liar. Because if I only believe in the truth, that truth that I, I was learned when I was almost a nun, I won't be this director that I am. I won't be this creator that I am. I probably won't say one word in, in English because my structure, my truth is be someone completely different than I am. So I'm a liar in that way. And lying, I just want to, to bring to you one little, just, just little one uh, piece of rosa, which is very easy because it's a, a, a very uh, short way to fly. Because clicking is something very hard when you are saying a word, but it's hard for me because I say English, I can speak in French, I can speak even almost a little bit of uh, uh, German, but I can speak Italian and Spanish. So I, I, I'm a, a, a Latin one, Eurocentric one, that is started to click. And it's overwhelming. It's something so good that I can bring you to you just a few seconds. That is, let me see if I can remember because I, I didn't sing this for an, almost a year, mm, I remember. Let me drink some water to get better. This is a little flying way to be a creator. And this is the creator that I am. And now I need to open to talk to you if you have some questions I want to change more with you and I want to to be more with you I will pray now for the sky open and I will be next week with you but I don't, I don't know <laughs> so please do you have some thank questions thank you Kena I just had a quick comment um because I think it's very special and I wanted to just make sure that it, to point that out. Um, so we have had the pleasure or maybe the displeasure of knowing a number of people uh, who are running art institutions around the world. Um, 
like I said, pleasure or displeasure, I'm not sure sometimes. Um, and so uh, the one thing we have never heard is that they are curating shows based on love. And I think this is an important thing to point out because um, perhaps many of these people had started out in a position, from a position of love, but the love part um, soon disappears into a cloud of professionalists and the love part gets ground ground away and it's replaced with the chess game of power and this is definitely not a game of love normally in terms of um, professional um, dealings with art um, so I think it's very very important uh, to point out that this is where you are still operating and uh, and that it is possible and I would say um, important that we remember that as artists that this ultimately is why many of us maybe maybe most of us and I would even dare guess all of us have started from a position of love to love to do what you, we are doing and to love to make art to, to love you know to be humanist about this in a holistic way um, so to remember that and and try to disengage or at least to downplay the chess game of power that ends up inevitably happening in an art practice. Love is a struggle. Very wonderful struggle. I have a question. Um, first of all, thank you. It was really beautiful. Um, you are distinguishing between young love and Fickery, fickery, am I saying it well? Older love. Do you also do that with artwork? Do you distinguish between, I mean, not chronologically, obviously, old art and young art in the same way that you're treating love? Does it make sense? Yes, yes, completely makes sense. But it's very connected when, when you see someone that is, um, committed with the work when someone is just when we work a lot as a creator because I, I, I never wanted to be an artist I, I wasn't an artist I never wanted to be an artist and I, I won't be I'm connected with the artwork as a creator and, uh, and I, I'm very curious about that and I, I, I like to do a lot of questions. I like to, to talk a lot with artists. We, Yehovah, we talked earlier and we, we just like uh, met just for 40 minutes, but uh, I like to understand how the work was made and how connected the work are with the artist. But, and when I say that I'm not so, so different from another creator. It's, I, just my dispositive is, is a little different. But who is commitment, who has uh, commitment with the work, have a very profound, deep work, or in another side, have a very shallow, in a good way work, because some works needs to be shallow needs to be in surface, not as an iceberg, needs to be just like a noctilucus. I don't know if you know what is that. It's a kind of, um, I don't know how to say, algas, oh my God. Is 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 that plant that lives in the sea? Seaweed. Hmm? Algas. Seaweed. Seaweed. Algae, yes. macroalgae. Yes. Yes, that uh, to exist needs to be in the surface and shine. You know that, you know, sometimes when you have the, that waves at night that really shines, they just live for that moment. They, they live in that moment. So uh, 
in this very, very shallow, we have the surface that is very important because of course I can say around the deep, the profound and how hard, but have some work that needs to be very shallow, have in the surface. And, and uh, I use this, this connection around love and fikiri to understand this way. Uh, in universities, we can say, well, you, you just start in the work or you need to be deeper, you need to research more. I put inside of love and fikiri in, in, in that way, like, because sometimes it's very connected with something that we need to work more. But sometimes it's so connected with you that it's already ready. It's already, it's just there completely in, in, in the way that needs to be. So it's, 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 sometimes it's harder because I just use more uh, 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 particular um, developments to understand the, the piece of art. But I worked and I study a lot of uh, Eurocentric history of art to be a creator. So it's, it's something that is not disconnected. It, it's something around, I need to, I prefer to see if, if have, uh, I prefer to see the artist, but the, if the artist is that, what I want to see, I want to see more than one work. I want to see 10 or more to understand what these artists are doing, why you are doing this way. Because sometimes one work tells me a lot, but if I have a lot of watching that, I, I can have uh, uh, this talk with the artist, even when the artist is dead. But I use this as, as, as something that I can lean, Hey, Kenya, thank you so much. It was um, very inspiring. I love your message, your love message, and your smile is beautiful. <laughs> thank uh -huh. you. Um, but I'm trying to understand uh, why you chose the word greater um, and how, how you interpret that, uh, that you call yourself a greater. Yes. Um, so is that putting a value? You're rating things? What does that mean to you? is a piece of power. It's around power. Okay. Being a creator, it's around power. But not only artists, it's around power. It and, and uh, uh, being inside of uh, art world is around power. Being a chief, it's around power. So being a creator, uh, is connected uh, to understanding what that I can do anything, which is something that even uh, when even yesterday people say to me that I cannot do anything. I see. I actually thought you were saying greater, but you were saying creator. Yes, creator. Okay, now I understand. Thank you. More questions? Curadora, yes. Jenny? Hi. Thank you so much, by the way. I really enjoyed all the things you were talking about um, and uh, also from the panel on Friday. Um, but I'm curious what this, what these ideas you know, how you um, bring them about, what kinds of shows do you curate? Or I'm curious to just know about how you bring this into, you know, manifestation. Like what, what does that look like or sound like or feel like? Right, I can tell you around one uh, art show that are now here in this museum, in, in Museum of Modern Art of Rio. Um, the name of, uh, the exhibition is in a raw state. It's only uh, uh, an exhibition with sculptures and 
the sculpture that have inside of the archival, not, not only in the, the collection of MAM. Because here in MAM we have one huge collection, now it's three collections. One is, is from MAM, another two from collectors that are very important here in Brazil. And these collections made the, the statement of the importance of this museum in Brazil, in Latin America. So we have a lot of strong pieces. And uh, we do this exhibition, we can say in Portuguese, Estado Bruto, because it's around the raw state. And uh, we choose to just uh, uh, start to think around these sculptures that was a little disruptive from the, the, the right operators. So we start to understand what the collections tell us when we are looking for sculptures. How many women we have inside of this collection? How many black people we have inside this collection? How many indigenous people we have inside this collection? What these collections say that what is a sculpture? So we just started to research, it was a hard work and we did this huge, we have 126 pieces. And, uh, and we, we develop one very intense movement to tell for the public what we want to tell they. And then we just bring this little information in each uh, piece. Each piece have the, the number because it's so many that we need to put a number. So how we choose these numbers, which one will be the one? Which one will be the last? We spend two weeks just talking around which one will be the one? Why? This sculpture will be the one. Oh no, this is easy because it's the first, but no, I didn't put this sculpture here to be the first. C first is not to be the first. If, as we know, do you saw the crown? <laughs> if you saw the crown, the crown, you just can see it last. So who is gonna be the one? So we just like, and then with the, the people from the museology, museology, we bring the number of the pieces inside of the collection, this code number. So it's a huge number. It's like, I don't know, maybe five numbers. And we don't have the first. We have the, the number like 277. I have, I have one here. Just let me get. Here. I have here you have the number of the piece. Here, and we change and we put in these two different places. First, you have the name of the piece. Then you have the name of the artist because we are more interested in the piece, not in the person. Then in this part, we have the name and how many times this piece was exhibited, exhibited since 20, since 2000. This one just three times. And here 
in the place that have the name of the artist, how many pieces of this artist that we have inside of the collection? Why this information? Religion, art, and politics. Why this uh, uh, people choose these specifically artists to be part of this collection and make this collection so important? This is a time-space answer. And, and I say that because I am in this time space now and I will change it. I have this power, as I was saying to Lynn, to change it. So I did. With this information, we tell to the public something. Our collection are starting to be open. Our collection is starting to be criticized. Our collections is starting to be doubted. And we, ha we have our Brancusi. And we put this piece of Brancusi, so important sculpture, in the side of another sculpture that was made by a very important woman here, which the name is uh, Lia Mena Barreto, which is a very strange sculpture that looks like a, 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 a baby car, like a doll's car, little one, but with the glue, with the body very, very disconnected, like like a, a, a leg here, an arm here, you have the face here, like. It's a very strange one. And we start to put another pieces around and understanding the spography to make no one could like do a picture of Brancusi alone. We don't let no one take a picture of him alone. And he is connected with the contemporary piece of art that almost no one knows, but this one are inside of the collection. Because sometimes we have movements in institutions that made institutions non-racist or no male-centered, but not anti-racist, not anti-structure, because it's easy by one piece of art of that woman that is screaming outside. Well, let's buy it. We have this money. We are these huge institutions. Let's buy it. Let's get it. Are inside of the collection. Now we have inside of the collection one wonderful piece of art of this artist that's so disruptive. When it shows, when this piece of art starts to be something that learn or teach the institutions, the public, graders, or only are something that doing the manifestation that the institutions need to be the same. So with that simple movement, we start to, to think and make people think and talk around that. Why we need one Brancusi? It's nice, it's important, that's okay. I, I won't say to take out the Brancusi, no. But why in 20 years, Brancusi was shown 18 times? Poor Brancusi cannot dream, cannot sleep. 
and otherwise we have some wonderful pieces that wasn't shown this last 20 years. And another thing that we did in these exhibitions was put the, because we have this movement to get inside of the museum. And to get inside of this, this room, you need to be, uh, to, to be uh, in the stairs. When you get out of the stairs, the room get open. So the first thing that you see is a sculpture made by, uh, by an artist named uh, called Mestre Didi. Mestre Didi is a master, Didi, uh, uh, made these sculptures uh, as a, a religion uh, piece of art, like Michelangelo or, or no, is what we here in Brazil call arte sacra. But Mestre Didi is from Candomblé. It's not from uh, sacred art, thank you. Sacred art. But it's not from uh, Catholicism. It's from Candomblé. And so this sculpture was made by so many different things that is not a marble, it's not a stone, it's not iron. It's very, very beautiful, simple and wonderful. But if you look at that, you won't say that this is in sculpture. And when we say here in the institution, we have these exhibitions, with only a sculpture. And the first sculpture that you see is something that you don't believe that is a sculpture, is something that is important for me. This is a kind of exhibitions that uh, I like to do. Now I have an exhibition in New York in uh, Tanya Monacta Gallery uh, that I was invited to do in uh, last, last year that started to thinking around one very, very uh, wonderful man, which is Abdias Nascimento. I can write the name. Abdias Nascimento was, uh, the sculptor's name is Brancosi. The another one, Mestre Gigi. And then uh, Abdias. Nascimento. Abdias Nascimento is a writer uh, uh, that made a lot of uh, moving uh, politicians, uh, um, actor, uh, painter, was a very, very strong personality here that just leave us in 2006. If I can be wrong of the date, but uh, that in 2000s, uh, that made one very important movement that called uh, movement uh, theater, black experimental theater. And the, the black experimental theater bring to the, to the society the idea that the black body could do the all the kinds of roles in theater, not only the slaver one or the, the, the subalternal ones. And they did a lot of Shakespeare's and they did a lot of formal, regular uh, uh, theaters with only black people, only black people. With that, they invited me to do an exhibition with Abdias Nascimento. And I just said to that I wasn't interested in do an exhibition, one exhibition with Abdias photographs. But I want to bring the way of thinking of Abdias to develop one exhibition, one exhibition. 
And this exhibition is called Engraved to Body. That we start to think how we, we can be connected to this kind of intelligence that only black body can bring and can give. how this kind of intelligence can bring and can bring and can give in the art world. So I started to research inside of the gallery that in that time we didn't have so many uh, black artists and outside of the gallery with Vitor Gorgulho, which one is a, a wonderful uh, uh, creator too. Uh, we started to think how can we bring this thinking not as a team, but as an ethic and aesthetic way of doing. Because it's easy to be non-racist. I want to more than. I want anti-racist acts. Because uh, it's easy to say, it does not exist anti-racist institution, but anti-racist uh, movement inside of an institution, because the name institution is already racist. So anti-racist institutions, <laughs> no but have anti-racist movement that made the institution more intelligent, more uh, 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 inside of the mistakes that we can do inside of the institution. And as artistic director here in MAM, we just trying to change with the lawyers how to pay artists. Because here, I don't know if, if this is, uh, happens in the US, here we need a lot of papers to pay people. And people that are uh, trans is changing the documents. And we won't pay people with the wrong names. This kind of violence we don't do. So I give back for the lawyers this problem because this problem is not mine. I didn't invent this problem. This problem is not mine. So I bring back to the lawyers and say, how can we pay transgender artists, indigenous artists, people that don't have documents regular as everyone wants inside of this institution? And I leave the room because they need to understand how to do that. You know, it, this is something that is, is it, and people are struggling for that and we are getting better institutions because of that. I will let the very nice legacy here because I won't be here forever. I can't. Because I'm not, I'm not institutionalized people. I, I like to, I don't know, I like to be trained. It's nice, change, move, twerking institutions. This is nice. But I, I had a lot of ways of doing as a creator and as artistic director that I did thinking around that, you know, like understanding and put the finger in the problems. And now you need to, now the problem I can see, but this problem is not mine. It's, yours please deal with that so um i think uh we should i'm gonna call for a break now so everyone can get a few minutes um to let, let's say 15 minutes to to um relax and stretch legs and what stretch your eyes um, <laughs> and uh and then we'll meet oh, i'm gonna close this link and so we'll continue the seminar on the the next link that we have i can just uh, does everyone have the link? Is anyone lost or is it okay? Should I? Is that okay. one in, in, in the... 
in the mail, yeah. In the email, all right. Yeah, so we'll, I'm going to close this one and open up the next one. But um, I just want to say, muito obrigado, muito obrigado. Uh, foi muito bonito. Boa tarde, até já. Até já. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.